hope you've all managed to stay safe and dry. There are just a few notices before we begin. Do you want to be seated for them? I seem to have quite a lot of bit. Firstly, just to let you know that on Wednesday afternoon at 2.30, there is going to be a short service at Praisemore House up in Burst, and all are welcome to join us at that service. This Thursday, the 26th, at 11.30, there is midweek communion in St. Kentigan's, followed by a soup lunch. And then from 1.30 to 3.30, we are having a craft noon. If you are into crafts, you are welcome to join us at that afternoon. Next Sunday here in St. Thomas's, it is our AGM and the service of Holy Communion at 11.15. You should have had the papers emailed out to you. If you haven't had them emailed out to you for any reason, then please let me know and we can arrange for a copy to come to you. We're providing very few paper copies this year. Um, for those of you who know knew Jack Cool, his funeral is tomorrow at 12.30 at Glenmick Kirk and all are welcome to attend that service. And finally, I'm sure most of you have heard about the flooding in Brekin. Next week, there will be a special extra collection for the Brekin Flood Appeal. So that's next Sunday, there will be an extra collection for the Brekin Flood Appeal. Okay? So just to warn you in advance about that. As far as I know, those are all the notices, unless there is anything I have forgotten. Okay? Let's have a moment of quiet before we begin our service. And it helps if you remember to turn your microphone on. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I could hear my voice coming back, but I think it was picking me up on this microphone. <laughs> That's much better. <laughs> we stand to sing our first hymn, hymn number 95, Holy, 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 hymn number 95.
So our service begins on page one of the Blue Books. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are his children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because he loved us first. So sitting or kneeling, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, with God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So the collect, the prayer for today. Almighty and merciful God, in your goodness, keep from, from us all that is harmful, that being ready both in body and soul, we may freely accomplish your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. If you'll please be seated for our readings. Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <coughs> Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by, by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that you may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and I create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. 
and the epistle is from Paul's le first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in words only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we stand to sing our gradual hymn, hymn number 460, Give to Our God Immortal Praise, number 460. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. 
Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. If you'd care to be seated, if I can invite the choir to move. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One of the biggest mistakes that we can make in this world is to see things in black and white. It reduces everything to right or wrong, true or false, good or bad. But in this world, things are really, rarely that clear cut. You will rarely meet a human being who is entirely bad or entirely good. We all have our faults and we all have our good points. And when we fail to appreciate that, then we fail to appreciate the world in which we live. This is one of the mistakes that the Pharisees made in the time of Jesus. They saw things in black and white. They were of the if you're not with us, then you're against us, Brigade. The act like this, do this, and all will be well, Club. So they found Jesus difficult. Jesus taught many things that matched the Pharisees' way of thinking. God will judge between the good and the bad, for example. But he didn't act in a way that matched their ways or their thinking. He mixed with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners. He taught that obedience to God and his law was needed, and then he went ahead and broke it anyway. He talked about the importance of being holy, and yet he seemed to condemn people who, to the Pharisees at least, seemed the holiest of them all, the teachers and the high priests. He was a confusion, and he sent them into a bit of confusion because they saw in black and white. Faith was more of a tick box, tick box exercise to them rather than a matter of heart and soul. And because they were confused by him, and let's face it, no one likes to admit that they're confused, they ended up rejecting him. He did not fit into their world view, into their neat and tidy way of thinking and believing. So they came up with a plan to catch him out, a question that would get him condemned one way or the other, a question about taxes. This question was a bit like that old question, have you stopped beating your wife yet? There were no right answered. Whichever way he answered, he would be in trouble. If he said it was wrong to pay taxes, then the Roman authorities would arrest him. If he said it was right to pay taxes, then the Jewish people would be upset by him. As far as the Pharisees were concerned, this question would put him in his place, would remove his threat, and then everything could go back to normal. The problem is, Jesus can see the trap. 
and he knows that they're not really looking for a proper answer. We know how the story goes. A coin is produced, Jesus asks them about it, and ends up saying, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Jesus calls them hypocrites. They are pretending to be seeking after the truth. They are pretending to be holy. They are pretending to be seeking the right answer under the law. But inside they already know, or think they know, what they want that answer to be. They know there is no right answer to the question. They are not prepared to listen and learn, to debate. They have prejudged Jesus. Jesus, in calling them hypocrites, is saying that their faith is being acted out in body, but not lived out in soul. And that is something for us to reflect upon. Is our faith purely a matter of head, of mind? Is it something which analyzes and judges, sees in black and white? Or is it something that also involves our heart and soul? It should do both. We are called to follow God, to love God with heart and mind and soul. And if it's with mind alone, it can become very, very black and white. It can lack compassion and understanding and love. It can be unwilling to bend. If it is with heart and soul alone, faith can become very, very fuzzy around the edges. And we can end up going down the wrong pathways. We are called to believe with our minds and our hearts and our souls, to have a holistic faith, to recognize that in faith things change and move. If we believe in a living God, then we have to understand that things that are alive will move and change and grow, even if we do not understand why or how. Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrites not because they're trying to trap him. It's not because they've got a very academic understanding of faith, or even because they ask that certain actions are done in certain ways according to the law. He calls them hypocrites because they refuse to comprehend that God might be bigger than their picture of him. That God might be willing to embrace that which they reject. Because they refuse to go beyond what they know of God in that time and that place. They have confined God to a box of their making and made him small. How big or small is your God? Have you perhaps tried to put him in a box? It is much safer that way after all. Imagine what God might do if he escapes the confines of human thought and opinion. The problem with God is that he does not fit into our human view of this world. He saves where we would condemn and condemns where we would save. He's found both in rich palaces and in the slums. He is a contradiction, a God so big he can create this world with a breath, and a God so small he was born in a stable. What God requires of us, what his kingdom needs from us, is the desire to seek God with mind and body and soul. The desire to do right. The willingness to struggle with issues of consciousness, to see God where he is unexpected, 
in people and places beyond our understanding. There is a place for head faith, for teaching and meeting together, for trying to understand what God is saying to us and to this world today. There is a place for rendering unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar. For praying for our rulers, for praying for our governments. But what God most wants of all is a holistic faith. That we look into our hearts and souls and see what he would, ha he would have us do and think and feel that we love as we have been loved, with generosity and with humility, that we walk in the footsteps of Christ, become imitators of him, that we love God above all others, and that we give to God the things that are God's, ourselves. Amen. So we stand to affirm our faith in that God in the words of the Creed on page four. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we pray for the Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church throughout the world, especially church leaders in places of conflict, for wise interventions and care in all dealings. We pray for all priests, especially Victoria, our rector, and for all who help to keep the church alive and growing. We remember the churches in our communities and their congregations. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we pray for the needs of the world, especially in conflicts between Israel and Palestine, Ukraine, Sudan, and Ye Yemen, and all other areas of unrest. We pray for wise leaderships and willingness to understand others' view, and for the safe return of the hostages. We pray also for areas devastated by the flooding, all who have lost their lives, their homes, and their livelihoods. 
We need to be more aware of the balance in the environment, overconsumption of raw materials and waste, especially in our own homes. We need respect for all the beauty and design of nature and all creation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our families and friends, especially our closest family, who puts up with our different moods, and for friends who have stayed with us throughout the years, thinking about our own friendship for others. We pray for people who are in special need, for those who are blind and partially sighted, for those whose deafness cuts them off from joining in conversations, and for those with illness that needs courage to overcome, and those particularly that we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we remember those who have died, members of our own family who have gave us love and encouragement, particular friends who died young, and anyone who died alone this week. Lord, in your mercy, may God enfold us in his love. May he surround us with his presence. May he protect us from harm. May he guide us by his spirit. And may he always keep us in his care. Amen. Can I invite you to stand for the peace? <clears throat> the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. So we turn to our offertory hymn, hymn number 233, O Thou Who Camest From Above, number 233.
So we turn to page six in our books and the first Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, he loved them, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace.
So come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, keep your eternal word. The blood of Christ. Keeping it in our life. Isabel, the body of Christ, keeping it in our life. Carol, the body of Christ, keeping it in our life. Amen. Jill, the body of Christ, keeping it in our life. Amen. Sue, the body of Christ, keeping it in our life. Andrew, the body of Christ, keeping it in our life.
give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. We say together prayer A on page 21. Father, we have broken the bread which is Christ's body. We have tasted the wine of his new life. We thank you for these gifts by which we are made one in him and drawn into that new creation, which is your will for all mankind. Through him who died for us and rose again, your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I invite you to stand for the blessing? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you, this day and always. Amen. So we turn to our final hymn, hymn number 202. Let all the world in every corner sing, number 202. There is, as usual, tea and coffee available after this service. But before that, did you know it was Warren's birthday on Thursday? Yes. <laughs> Somebody told me about this. Shall we sing happy birthday to Warren? Happy birthday to Happy birthday. I'm afraid there is no cake. <laughs> no, he didn't tell us. That wouldn't do any harm. <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.